Hey everyone, my name is Matt. Welcome to my backyard. In this video, we're gonna be making this awesome hanging bed swing. This thing is sized for a twin size mattress and with the swinging and rocking action, this thing is extremely comfortable and it'll put you to sleep pretty quickly. <laughs> I know I've already spent plenty of time hanging out in this thing. <laughs> so let's get started. So for the frame, I'm gonna be using ash. I have a few of these slabs that didn't turn out that great. They had some ant infestation and the ants brought a lot of rot along. So most of the slabs from this log have a lot of dry rot and just sections that aren't that great for anything. So I'm going to pull my longer pieces out of these bigger boards and try and salvage as much material as I can to get all the smaller frame pieces. And then I have some wide cherry boards that make up the panels. So I'm going to start with the hardest parts to get which are the long rails that will actually hang the whole bed from the ceiling. Those are a little over seven feet long. So I need to get the straightest, clearest sections for those. And to do that, I'm gonna use a straight edge and just draw directly onto the slabs to get a straight edge. They can cut along that line to roughly establish a straight line and then cut a parallel line next to that to get the actual board out of the slab. And then I can get some of the smaller parts out of the remainder from the slab. Now I have a second slab from the same log and I'm going to start pulling the second long rail for the base from here. And then from the slab I can also get the upper rear rail which is about six feet long. And once again I have some leftovers that I can pull some of the small parts from. I wasn't able to get the two shorter frame rails from those two slabs, so I have this shorter slab from the same log that I'll get the last two frame parts from. Now with all my parts cut out of the slabs, I can start milling them up. I'll start by flattening them on the jointer and squaring up one edge. Then I'll run them through the planer to take them all to the same thickness. And then lastly, I can rip them all to width. So the stock size that I'm going for is a two by equivalent with the rounded corners removed. So this entire project can be made from two by sixes and two by fours with the rounded corners ripped away. So I'm gonna start by making the support frame and I'll start by cutting some parts for that to length. So for the joinery on this, I'm using the domino, but any non-integral joinery method will work such as dowels or pocket holes without affecting the length of the parts. I'll be putting two rows of dominoes in each part and I'll use a scrap piece of three quarter inch plywood to create an offset. And here I'm just starting with the shorter rails, which will get joined into the longer ones. So now I can lay out the matching mortises in the long rails and I've laid out where I want that long rail to start and that's actually where I'm going to put this fence. Same thing as before that has the indicators for the mortise locations. Now I can put it right on the location because I have two different offsets to consider. I have the offset from the bottom of the bit to the bottom of the base of the machine. This is going to be running like this on the workpiece. I also have the offset from the face of the rail to the edge of this mortise here which are the same thing, they're both a quarter inch. So I can place this fence or guide for the domino directly on that line and get it in the perfect spot. So what I can do is clamp this in place and I can use a square to make sure it's square to the edge. So what I can go through and make the first row of mortises and then to make the second row I can use the same thickness spacer as I did before, three quarters of an inch plywood, put that in there and then make the second row of mortises. I'm also going to use the slight slop option to give me a little bit of leeway side to side just in case I don't line these up perfectly based off of my lines here. Now I'll go around and do the other three corners to create a frame. So now I'm going to start working on the uprights, both the back supports and then the front as well. 
and I'm going to start by putting the mortises into the underside of the uprights. And there I'm going to use four of the 10 millimeter dominoes just because I have the space. So I'm going to cut them into the uprights first and I'll show you how I'm going to get those mortises into their correct locations onto the frame. So now again I want to use the machine vertical like this so I need somewhere to reference this fence off of. So I have this little like corner thing here, I can clamp this in place. And what that's gonna do is extend the reference edge of the inside here, up here so I can reference the fence off of that. I can plunge down and make these cuts. And that'll also allow me to put a domino out here in the center of the long rail. Now that the joinery on the uprights complete, go ahead and start cutting all of the miters and getting those joined up with dominoes as well. So I have everything mocked up here so I can get the perfect length on the top rail thing, armrest I guess, <laughs> and this angled riser. So I have them all laid out like this and that allows me to find this point right here where the two intersect and where the top of that miter needs to be in order for these two to come together perfectly and complete this kind of goofy shape. That way I know that the length on this is correct and the length on this is correct as well given any sort of error I might have that's accumulated as I've been building this. So all I have to do is just mark this point right here onto both pieces and it should be good to go. So I'll take this apart, make those last cuts, add the dominoes, and then the side assemblies will be complete. So now I'm going to get this curve drawn and I've gone ahead and I've laid out the center points as well as the distance I want the curve to travel on both sides. And I set up my drawing bow to capture the curve which intersects the two outside corners as well as this point here in the middle. Now I can just get this lined up on here and draw the curve. So now I'll do the same thing up here. I have the termination points here where I want the curve to terminate as well as the high spot here. So I to adjust this radius so that I can get all three of those points in the curve, which will give me a consistent thickness piece. So the panels are going to come out of these two boards of cherry. I'm going to use this one here for the back panel. It's got this kind of knot thing in the middle. I'm going to center that in the panel opening, and then the two side panels will come out of this other board here from the left and the right of this knot here in the middle. Now to lay out the shape and size of the side panels, I'll use the side frames as a template to give me a guide of what size I need to make these things. I can trace around the inside of the frame and then expand the lines about a quarter inch in all directions so if the panel fits into the grooves that will be cutting into the frame. So since these panels are floating, I'll be pre-finishing them and that just makes sure that when they shrink in the winter time, it doesn't expose a band of unfinished material. I'm using an outdoor finish on these. Even though this swing isn't going to be exposed to the elements, it's going to be under a porch. It's still kind of nice to have some UV protection. 
So with the frame construction all complete and the panels ready to go, next I'm going to start making the grooves in the frame that's going to receive the panel. To do that, I'm going to use a router with a straight bit and an edge guide, and the edge guide will follow the outside faces of the frame, creating a groove wide enough for the panels. To cut the grooves on the shorter pieces, I'm using a slot cutter in the router table. This makes it a little bit easier than trying to control a router on top of a small workpiece. And while the long rails are disassembled, I can do a last little bit of detail work. I'm going to cut off this little wedge here at the bottom just to give a little bit of a visual interest. And also drill the hole for the rope, which is going to hold the whole swing up. So I went ahead and got all the frame parts finish prepped, all nice and finished sanded. And now I'm going to start working on the glue up. I'll be doing this in multiple stages, starting with the support frame assembly and then working from there. I'm also going to use epoxy for this glue up. That's going to give me a lot of open time so I can make sure I get this thing all together all perfectly before the glue sets up. Now that the support frame is all glued up, I can add the back frame and the back panel. And then once that one's all set up, I can start adding the sides. Now one of the last details is to add this ledger to the inside of the frame and that's going to hold the boards to support the mattress. And I'm just going to glue that directly to the inside faces of the long rails. Now the epoxy is all set up and I'm going to do a little bit of finish prep here. I'm just going to go over all the joints to make sure they're all nice and flush and to clean up any epoxy that's squeezed out. Then I'm going to break all the edges. I'm just going to give the frame a nice light round over to preserve the square look of the frame. But along the front edge, I'll add a much larger round over since your legs will be contacting that area. So this thing is all ready to finish. All the edges are broken. Everything feels really good and looks ready to go. So let's get finishing. So now the last thing I need are some boards in here to support the mattress. These boards will go between the ledgers and get screwed down to them. So I'll mill up some stock for these. These are going to be out of some narrower ash boards, but they're essentially just one by fours. So there we go, all done, and I'm super happy with the way this thing turned out. I really like the look, especially this little bit of this curvature here. I think that has a really cool look. 
and I'm making this for a friend of a friend and they wanted a rope system for hanging it. So I picked up three lines of half inch sisal rope and I braided them together to give kind of a chain kind of look, which is I think pretty cool. Now I'm not really sure how much rope they're gonna need for their hanging situation. So I kind of left things a little bit um, goofy and long in some places, but I do have this one corner here that is set up really nicely. Let me show you how I did that. So as you can see, the main line is just three pieces. That's just braided together in a simple braid. And then if you pan down to the connection point on the bed frame, so that line comes down through the hole and back up again. And to secure it, all I've done here is just braid it back in, following the strands back up individually. So you have this sort of double braid look down here as it's all getting tied in, which leads to a really nice connection point. And then the ends I just have sitting here for now. But if you're doing this yourself, you could kind of cut them at the right length or kind of tuck them a little bit better. So if you want to make your own bed swing, just like mine, I have a set of plans available on my website. I'll have a link to that down in the description. And of course, if you do make your own, be sure to share with me. I'd love to see what everybody's working on. And then lastly, of course, if you do make one of these, just make sure that whatever you're hanging this thing from can actually handle the load. The swing itself, if you choose to make it out of hardwood like I did, is relatively heavy, but that's nothing compared to the weight of people sitting on this thing. So just keep that in mind. So I'm super happy with the way this thing turned out. The ash for the frame complements the cherry for the panels really nicely. I think it has a really nice contrast. And it's really cool to know that, again, like everything I do, I guess, that all the lumber I use for this, I milled myself. And if you wanna see me going out and picking up the log and slabbing it up, for the ash for the rails. I'll have a link to that as well. So I think that's about it for this one. Thank you as always for watching. I greatly appreciate it. If you have any questions or comments on the swing or anything back in the shop, please feel free to leave me a comment. As always, I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. And until next time, <laughs> happy woodworking. I think I might take a nap now. That sounds pretty good right about now. Nap time.